Senator Menendez of New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think we, in order to combat the fentanyl crisis, it's important to understand how these opioids are getting into the country. Uh, Mr. Urban, is it accurate to say that the vast majority of fentanyl trafficking comes into the country to official ports of entry? Most of the fentanyl comes through official ports. It usually comes across the Mexican border, most of the fentanyl coming into the country. But through official ports of entry? Most of it, uh, a majority of it probably does, yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, here's the facts. In 2021, over 90% of fentanyl seizures occurred at legal crossing points. Just 279 out of 1.8 million arrests by border patrol of illegal border crosses resulted in fentanyl seizure. So it seems to me that in the first place, if we are serious about it, one of the elements of this challenge is stopping fentanyl from coming into the United States, we would significantly increase resources to combat the flow of fentanyl across the border. We would think about dramatically enhancing our technology capability at those official points of entry where the vast majority, the 1.8 million uh, arrests uh, were taking place. Uh, and that would help us dramatically uh, stem the flow. In order to make real progress in the fight against fentanyl, we have to hold foreign governments, such as China and Mexico, accountable to their commitments to crack down on producers and traffickers of synthetic opioids. In November at the APEC uh, summit, China and the United States announced the resumption of bilateral cooperation on counter-narcotics, but we need more than words at this point. Uh, Mr. Urban, uh, from your experience, what has China done to crack down on Chinese pharmaceutical companies that manufacture fentanyl and fentanyl precursors? There's been limited you know, uh, action within, within China from my perspective since I've left government in terms of doing that. Uh, during my time in government, I did not have insight within China in terms of, 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 of what they were actually doing. We had a, certainly an office within, within the embassy there for DEA and it had limited cooperation with, with Chinese law enforcement. We we're trying to build that relationship at the time. How about Mexico? What have they done uh, to crack down on the drug cartels that mix fentanyl with other drugs and smuggle them into the United States? So I think they, in, in a very difficult situation concerning the cartel's power and reach and ability to corrupt Mexican uh, government components, uh, they've done to some degree what they can under the circumstances, but it's been very limited uh, in terms of, of, of their ability to, to counter or negate the ability of the Mexican cartels to traffic fentanyl here. And these are, these are two of our big challenges. The answer to both questions, in my view, is not enough. I appreciate that President Biden raised this with President Xi when they were at that summit. Um, but this is why in 2019 I introduced the Fentanyl Sanction Act, which provided the U.S. government with tools and resources to sanction illicit traffickers and producers in China and Mexico. And why last year I introduced the Strengthening Fentanyl Sanctions Act to expand uh, and extend those authorities. We have to try to reach abroad as well as we deal with issues domestically uh, and put pressure uh, on them. Uh, and uh, certainly the Fendall Fentanyl uh, Act is a very strong um, start, uh, but I think uh, there's other things that we can do as well. Lastly, I'd like to echo the chairman's support for the Fendall Fentanyl Act. It's a bipartisan bill. It authorizes practical and common sense steps to hold bad actors accountable. It builds on existing laws to better combat the flow of illicit opioids into the United States. I'd like to highlight uh, a provision that I got into the bill that requires the Department of Treasury to report on actions taken by the People's Republic of China with respect to persons involved in the supply chain for fentanyl and fentanyl precursors. We can't not solve the fentanyl crisis uh, within our borders alone. We have to address the international components of the supply chain as well. And do you believe those provisions of the bill, the Fendall Fentanyl Act that reaches beyond our borders are uh, important as well? I, I think they're critical. I, I, I fully support your statement that we have to essentially attack these networks outside the country to help protect the country. Uh, the sanctions component that you spoke about, and that's also in the Fend Act, 
is something that needs to be used more offensively and, and in greater in scale, and I mean dramatically greater in scale with speed. So again, versus six to nine months in indictment, which takes a long time and a tremendous amount of resources, you want to dramatically increase the scale and the targeting and sanctions uh, tool against these networks, whether it be Chinese precursor chemical facilitators, the chemical companies themselves, or anyone that's helping to facilitate this within Mexico, which is a variety of different components, sir. Thank you. I hope the House, our House colleagues will move quickly. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Sir. Uh, Senator Tim